Hello everyone and welcome back to Comic Vantage. Now first thing I'm going to do is make sure my camera is recording and actually see the little record button right there. Um, because last video I shot, I shot the entire video and never hit record. So here we are once again. This is my year end video. This is the third year in a row I am revisiting my top 50 uh, comic books in my collection. This started out as somebody's contest they did. Uh, a couple years back, and I, you know, just, I thought, I saw everybody making these top vid 50 videos, and I uh, made one myself, not even realizing it was actually an entry for a contest. I just thought it was going to be fun, and I figured every year since then, I would revisit the video and uh, just show, you know, little updates. Maybe some of the books say the same, some changed, who knows? So, here I am again, year three. Usually, I make these in September, but I think I'm going to start waiting towards the end of the year now. It seems kind of fitting to do that. Okay, these books are in no particular order as far as my favorites to least favorite or anything like that. I just kind of stacked them all up over on the side over here so, you know, we can catch a look. And uh, I'm just going to start pulling them out. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to start with my uh, my uh, CGC books. Because I have a couple CGC books. Let's get them off the table because they are heavy and annoying. So, first up, I have... A Hell Shock, issue number one, CGC 9.8, signed here by Jay Lee. Now, this book is uh, in my top 10 or in my top 50. Let me readjust my camera here because this was a Christmas gift, uh, and this probably is it, it, it's, it's right up there with one of my most important books in my collection. Uh, the Mystery Men. I don't know if you guys have watched the Mystery Men videos, they do unboxings. A lot of times, they unbox my mystery boxes. And as a thank you, they all got together and pitched in and they bought me this book and sent it to me uh, last year for Christmas. And wow, I mean, this book means a lot. That's why, I mean, I figured I'd show it first just because it's it, not only my huge Jay Lee fan, but also the, the sentimentality behind it is really, really important to me. So that's very cool. Next on my list, CGC 7.5. Silent Night, uh, signed by Mr. Frank Miller himself. Uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of Silent Issues, and this book has no words to it. When this book came out in 1995, I was really in the height of my collecting back in the 90s. And wow, this book just blew me away. So when I got a chance to meet Frank Miller and uh, get these signed, I just I could not pass it up. Uh, yeah, just absolutely amazing book. Another thing I'd like to do with this list is maybe show you guys a few things you've never seen before. And, uh, you know, like I said, just broaden your horizons, <laughs> as Jack Nicholson would say from uh, Batman. All right, next up, CGC 9.6, All New Wolverine, issue number two. This is the first appearance of Gabby, a.k.a. Honey Badger, uh, Laura's clone twin sister. Or little sister. I mean, I'm sure she's a twin because she's a clone, but she's still younger. I'm a huge, huge, huge Honey Badger fan. Absolutely love the character. It's one of the best characters to come out of Marvel Comics in the last 10 years. And this was my own personal copy I bought right off the newsstand. Sent it in just because I wanted it protected. It's got a 9.6, but it's from my personal collection, so it doesn't matter to me. Love this book. All right. Last CGC book on my list... Lady Death, issue number one, and this is also a 9.6. And the funny thing is, I actually picked this up off of eBay. Whenever I see Lady Death books, I grab them. Um, this one here, I couldn't pass up, because I think I spent less for it than it actually would have cost me to send it in and get it graded myself. <laughs> so, uh, I was a huge Lady Death fan back in the 90s as well. I remember buying this book uh, uh, resale uh, back then. I think I paid like 30 bucks for it in like 95 uh, so that was actually a pretty penny for a teenager at the time when I was buying these books. All right. So those are the CGC books. Get them out of the way. I'm not going to do a recap at the end because there are just way too many books and that make, make this video huge, huge, huge long. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show my Gator Guard comics. Um, I do plan on putting a lot more of these books in Gator Guards. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I think I have like... I don't know, 30 Gator Guard slabs around here. If you guys have not seen these things yet, they are absolutely amazing. They are rock solid, as hard as any slab. 
multicolored screw so you can take your book in and out. And wow, will they really, really protect your comic. Okay, first up, X-Men number 11, and this is the silver cover variant Pressman edition. Now, this book here, I, don't, I honestly can't tell you why this book means so much to me, but it really does. I absolutely love this book. I love this cover. Uh, I've loved it since the day it came out. I used to have a t-shirt with this with it on it. I just, I adore it. It's great Jim Lee artwork. And this here is the silver cover Pressman edition, which came as a uh, Pressman board game exclusive. It was the only way to get it. So it's really, really, really tough to find. And with this awesome silver foil cover, it's even harder to find in good condition. So very happy to have that in my collection. Next up, Magneto, issue number zero. Again, this book means a lot to me from my youth. Uh, I, God, I remember being a kid and begging my dad for the 10 bucks that it cost to go buy this book at a comic book store. And he actually went and did for me. Uh, Bill Sienkiewicz artwork, great story, or Bill Sienkiewicz cover, great story inside. Absolutely beautiful. I love this book. And look, I mixed and matched purple and red screws on that. So there you go. Another absolutely beautiful book in my collection is Catwoman issue number 51, Adam Hughes cover. Uh, this was just a cover buy for me. It's absolutely amazing. I love this cover. It's a book that will never leave my collection. And then I have Gen 13 issue number one, the uh, lingerie variant. Uh, when this book came out, there were 13 different variants, which at the time was unheard of for a comic book. So it sold tons of copies uh, just because of 13 variants, everybody hunting them down. I'm happy to report I do own all 13 variants now, and this one is my favorite, so I had to put that in there. And I actually had to use these blue screws. They look really nice on that cover. Okay, and my last Gator Guard book is... This is an Evil Ernie number one sketch cover. And this cover was drawn by my absolute good buddy, Squatchy Comics. Uh, this was a, a Christmas gift from him. And wow, like I said, this... It, it means so much to me when somebody takes this much time and effort in, uh, you know just the thought that went into it and then the time and effort spent to put it together. And the cover is absolutely beautiful. Squatchy is an amazing artist. Look at that. <laughs> he, he drew comic Foo there being beheaded because we all know Foo is a furry. <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Really, really happy for that. Yeah, all these Gator Guard books uh, will also get hung up. Uh, there's comic mounts that you can get and these fit perfect inside of them. All right, and now we are going to start onto our normal books. These are all just bagged and boarded. Like I said, they are in no particular order whatsoever. So next up, we have Love and Rockets, issue number one. Everybody who watches my channel knows I have a huge love for indie comics, especially some of these older underground lower print run books. This thing, this is the first print right there. You can tell by the price tag, $2.95. Denotes first print on this book. I think there was like five printings. And each printing, the book got progressively more expensive <laughs> until it got up to like $4, I think. Maybe $4.50, $4.95, somewhere around there. Uh, Love and Rockets will always hold a special place in indie history. You know, this was the Hernandez brothers getting together at their best, doing these more adult-oriented stories. If it wasn't for books like this, imprints like Vertigo would have never happened. I mean, these guys were the pioneers in this type of comic. And next up, we have two different books. Kind of the same theme behind it. We have an X-Force issue number one and an X-Men issue number one. Both Ji Hung Lee variants. Uh, you can see front and back, you know of Laura Kinney there. I'm a huge X-23 fan. And these here are really, really special to me just because of these beautiful remarks on the covers. I originally bought these to put in the mystery boxes and once they got here, I just couldn't 
part with them. I had to keep them. So, yeah. Personal collection, those went. Next up, Doom Patrol, issue number eight. That there, pure cover grab for me, just because it's James O'Barr artwork. I absolutely adore James O'Barr artwork. And this was just a little too on the ridiculous side that I had, I couldn't pass it up. So, absolutely beautiful. Oh, ho, ho, the next book, which is the holiest of holy grails in anyone's comic book collection. I don't care who you are. Condom Man, issue number one. Yes, Condom Man. This book came out in the 90s. I actually owned it back then. I, it was just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, let's see, when did this come out? 1993, we got a date on there. Beautiful book. Uh, this one here is actually in gorgeous condition. It's very, very hard to get this book in a nice condition. The paper stock that was used for the cover is just, wow, it's just very tender and it creases very easily. Uh, color breaks very easy. And the awesome thing is that every single issue is signed and numbered by the creator on the back cover. Next up. Let's revisit some 80s here with G.I. Joe, number one. I mean, this is pretty much self-explanatory on uh, where it goes or why it's in the collection. I mean, it's G.I. Joe, number one. I mean, you grew up in the 80s. G.I. Joe's Transformers, Thunderhawks, or uh, Silverhawks, Thundercats. I mean, they were all just, uh, they were top of the line. So this just brings back huge nostalgia, happiness right there. And we're going to keep on the retro train here with, haha, Transformers issue number one. Again, I'm a giant Transformers fan. I absolutely adore Transformers. Everything about it, the lore, the characters, the design, it's all just, oh, it's amazing. I absolutely love it. And, uh, you know, this right here is the epitome of Transformers history when it comes to comic books. You just can't get any better than that. So I'm actually going to leave that up because the next book in line corresponds directly with this book. And I got a story behind it. And I'm sure some of you have heard it before, but I'm going to tell it again. And that is Dead World issue number one. And Dead World issue number one, unbelievably amazing, amazing, amazing zombie story by Vince Locke. Uh, great story, great artwork, absolutely beautiful book. Uh, I've been an indie fan as far back as this book. Um, and let me tell you the story now of how these two come together. I remember being a kid in a comic book store and holding both of these books in my hand and debating on which one to buy. <laughs> I mean, that is just crazy right there. Uh, but yeah, to me, these two books will always, always go together. I actually might get them framed and hang them up together or something. All right, now next up, this is a new addition to the list for the year, and that is Star Wars Kanan issue number six. This book is super incredibly hot right now. Uh, it is the first appearance of Sabine Wren. Well, actually, the first full appearance. Issue number one is the first appearance uh, cameo, and this is the first full Sabine Wren. Uh, I watched the Rebel series for the first time about a year ago. Absolutely fell in love with it. Actually, it was right after Disney Plus came out. I sat down and finally watched it. And Sabine Wren slowly became one of my favorite characters in the uh, Star Wars universe. I absolutely adore her. So I had to have this book. I ended up with like, I don't know, five or six copies of this book. And uh, they... Uh, I put some in mystery boxes. I think I kept like three or four copies for myself. So I'm really glad to have those now when I was buying them. Man, they were cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. So it's definitely good to have. And we're just going to stay on a little Star Wars tangent here for a while. Next up, Star Wars Jedi. Mace Windu, another book that has been seeing some serious heat lately. Uh, not only for this gorgeous Mace Windu cover, but also because this is the first appearance of Asajj Ventress. Love Asajj Ventress. She is an absolutely amazing character from the Clone Wars series. And we're just going to keep that up because the next book go ties along with it. And this is Star Wars Republic issue number 52. And this is the first cover appearance of Asajj Ventress. Um... Now, I did hear that the, there was a book that came out that's supposed to be canon that killed her off, but 
I mean, when it comes to Disney, Disney, you never know what's going to be canon and what's not. I'm really hoping they have a way to bring her back and have some kind of appearance for her. Oh, and then the, the grail of the Star Wars universe currently, Clone Wars issue number one, first appearance of Ahsoka Tano. This is the hot, must-have Star Wars book right now. This one here is a little bit lower quality because this is my personal collection, and I don't mind having low-grade books because I never plan on selling them when they're for my PC. Uh, but still, wow, this would be an expensive book even now at this low grade that I think I paid, I don't know, maybe 25 bucks for it <laughs> a while back. Uh, I did warn everyone to start snatching these things up when they were affordable, and now they've just gone through the roof. I think it was the beginning of the year when I told everybody this book was going to hit Harley Quinn levels, and it has. 9.8s reaching $1,500. So, yeah. Next up. Look at that. Batgirl issue number I don't even know. <laughs> and you know what? Not Karen, because this is amazing. I love the Purple Rain homage. Uh, I'm a huge Prince fan, so this really struck me. It's absolutely gorgeous. It fits right in with that cover, uh, with the movie poster, and this is just beautiful. Absolutely love it. Next up, Venomverse, issue number one, variant edition. If I'm not mistaken, this is a Matina cover. Absolutely beautiful. Now, this is in my collection because it was a gift from my kid. She just randomly ended up at a comic book store one day that had recently opened up. She wanted to stop in and check it out because she was in the neighborhood. And she just grabbed this for me, just as a fun gift. And I love that, so I will never part with this book. It's going to have a permanent place in my collection. You know, and when I say my collection, everybody thinks I have these thousands upon thousands upon thousands. No, I have two short boxes of books. That's it. No more, no less. Two short boxes. If I ever get over that, I purge the collection. All right, next up in our list, Continuum, Contin yeah, Continuum, look at that. Issue number one, beautiful Joe Linsner cover. Also, it comes with a little trading card right there. Now, I have this because it is the first appearance of Dawn. Uh, Cry for Dawn is an absolutely amazing indie anthology series that came out. It only ran a few issues before it was, you know, they split up. Joe Linsner and Joe Monks. So, it's, I, I love it. It's a great series, and this is her first appearance, so I had to have that. And it's funny because, you know, in that series, Dawn is kind of like a, uh, a hostess sort of character that just hosts the stories. She didn't later break out into her own series until way after this had come out. Oh, now back, still on indie kick here. Love me some indie comics. Faust, issue number one. Man, when this book, when I first read this book, I was not prepared for it. Uh, ultra violent, ultra sexual, 18 plus adult reading. <laughs> but with this completely intricate, insane Tim Vigil artwork and absolutely amazing David Quinn story, uh, it's just a great book. But wow. Yeah, if you're going to read it, be prepared. It's shocking, even by today's standards. All right, and the next awesome indie book on our list, Night Cry, issue number one. Also, for mature readers. Um, I also have this copy here, signed by Everett Hartso, the creator of Razor. Uh, this is an anthology book. It has different stories in it. The first issue... Absolutely amazing. It has a uh, Razor story in it, which so cool because it's written by Everett Hartso, but then it has artwork by Ed McGinnis. Yes, that Ed McGinnis. It has an Evil Ernie story in it, which, wow, you know, that's everybody who's, who knows my channel knows I love Evil Ernie. And it has an awesome story by uh, uh, Hart Fisher. Now, Hart Fisher, uh, back in the day, was uh, known as the most dangerous man in comics. And wow, yeah, he wrote some incredibly awesome stories. All right, next up on our list, Phantoma, issue number one. And now this book here, 
uh, was a gift from my buddy. Uh, he floats around some uh, YouTube communities. His name is Lyric Magic Moments. And he just sent me this as a Christmas gift a couple years back. I just absolutely fell in love with this cover. I mean, just look at that. It is hauntingly beautiful. It is absolutely amazing. I love it. And then we have Cheval du War, issue number 15. This is this gorgeous cover was done by Yashitaka Amano. Um, if you don't know the name, you really should. This is the guy who did all the character designs behind all the most of the Final Fantasy games. Uh, plus Vampire Hunter D. I'm sure some of you have heard of that. And I'm just a huge fan of his artwork. And currently. There is a new Harley Quinn cover coming out that he has drawn. So you guys really need to go check that out. I believe most retailers are selling it for about $12.99. It comes out. You can pre-order it. It comes out in a few months. Yeah. And then we have Wildcats issue number two. This is on the list because it's shiny. <laughs> There are no two ways about it. This is 90s gimmick goodness right there. The hall of foil, the shininess. It's just that screams 90s. You've got Jim Lee artwork with his whole team busting out of everywhere. And yeah, 90s. <laughs> and then we got Hack and Slash, My First Maniac, issue number one, second printing. Total cover grab for that Jenny Friesen. Beautiful, beautiful cover work. I mean, it, I saw that, fell in love, had to have it. And this book is not cheap right now either. Next up, we have Betrothed, issue number one. Yes, yes, yes. Some of you have probably never heard of this book. It's from Aftershock Comics. I believe it only ran four or five issues as a miniseries. One of the best stories I've ever read in comics. That's why it's on this list. It is honestly just an absolutely amazing read. If you have not read this, please go out and either pick up the issues. They are dirt cheap. I'm sure you can find them in dollar bins. Or there might be a trade out now. It is so amazing. Really, really good. Indie comics at its finest. That's one of the things you can always say about indie books is that uh, they usually always had the best stories, and that's really attracted me to indie books back in the day. Next up, Ultra Force number one, the hologram cover. I mean, it might be a little hard to see that. Oh, there we go. Look at that. We got Hardcase and Ghoul and just all these amazing characters. I think we might even see Prime back there and Topaz. Oh, see this character right here? That is Topaz. Uh, Marvel Comics used her in the uh, Thor movie, Ragnarok. She's uh, Jeff Goldblum's right hand. This is supposed to be her. So there you go. Ultraverse, Ultra Force, issue number one. The Ultraverse was absolutely amazing. It was Malibu's first attempt at a shared universe, and they really, really hit the mark with this thing. I honestly don't know why it failed, because it was so good. Especially, and they had some great talent. Like, this was actually George Perez artwork on this thing. Next up, aha, 80s goodness again. We are back to that, Thundercats, issue number one. Again, totally self-explanatory while it's on this list. And to follow that up, Voltron, issue number one. Again, completely self-explanatory. Voltron, which is absolutely amazing. I had the Matchbox set that had all five lions. I always wanted the panache plates, the big ones that opened up and you put the figures inside. Oh, so good. And we got here, Comico Primer, issue number five. First appearance of what will become the Max. So again, Indie at its finest, evolving, and just putting out some amazing stories. Rune, issue number one for Malibu Comics. Again, it's an Ultraverse book. I loved these. Rune is absolutely amazing. This was a creation by Barry Windsor Smith. This is the Silver Foil Ultra Limited variant, only 5,000 printed. I'm a giant Barry Windsor Smith fan. Actually, I think I'm going to dig ahead here on my list and pull another Barry Windsor Smith book out. So we got that. And then we have 
Conan the Barbarian, issue number 23. Barry Windsor Smith artwork. But this is the first appearance of Red Sonia. Just an amazing book that anybody should have in their collection. Next up, we have Zenober, issue number one from Scout Comics. Again, this was a gift from my good buddy, Daz the Key Chaser. If you guys don't follow him on YouTube, you really should go look him up. He always puts out some amazing information on books. This showed up one Christmas as a gift, and I just absolutely love it. Um, you know, I, I, I appreciate any gift that I get, just because, like I said, it's just the thought that went into it means so much to me. Oh, Venom issue number one. And this is the awesome red foil. Again, 90s goodness at its finest. Cool red foil with the webs and the greatness and the Venom and the raw. This is when Venom was trying to reinvent himself as a good guy, but still kind of bad. <laughs> this was actually a really fun series. Great artwork, great storytelling. I had a blast with it, and that's why it's on this list. All right, and then we have Marvel's issue number two. Now this here, this was just an absolutely amazing book. Uh, when these came out, God, I was still in high school when this came out. And uh, it was a four issue miniseries and each one was hand painted by Alex Ross. Nothing had ever been seen like this before. And you know, as a rule, uh, a second issue is always ordered less than a first issue. So this one was really scarce when it originally came out. This was the X-Men story, that's why I had to have it. It was absolutely amazing because I love the X-Men. And it, it gave more of a human approach from the lens of a photographer on the superheroes of the time. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. Still holds up to this day if you ever want to pick these up and read them. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, oh, the crossover you wish you'd never gotten. <laughs> this is the, I think the book is actually called the My Venomous Little Pony or something, or My Venomous Evil Pony of Zombies of Hell. <laughs> I don't even remember. But wow, seriously, it's this, it's a negative space variant, uh, of course, with a pony being venomized, only a hundred printed. I just, I had to own this book. Just look at that. It is amazing. There is a, a Red Carnage version as well that is kind of hard to find. I really wish I could get a hold of that one. But man, I mean, that's just beautiful right there. Next up, all new X-Men issue number 40. Now this is on this list purely for storytelling. Uh, this is probably one of the it has a few pages in here that are probably some of the greatest written comic pages I've ever seen and I've ever had the pleasure of reading. Uncanny X-Men, issue number 314. I'm a huge Iceman fan. Um, and this book takes place right as Emma Frost is waking up from her coma after the Hellions were killed. And she's freaking out trying to find them. Um, but instead of actually waking up from the coma, her mind sort of reaches out and grabs the first body it can, which is Bobby Drake, Iceman. She completely controls Iceman and uses his abilities in ways he never even imagined possible. And uh, it was just an absolutely masterful piece of storytelling. Uh, written by Scott Lobdell and... When I actually had, when I met him, uh, he got to talking about this issue, and he had told me that at the time he wanted to revamp Iceman and explore his powers and expand them and make him more powerful, and even change the way he looked. And he was completely shot down by Marvel Comics. He said, "They said no, we cannot do that, because we have a new toy line coming out, and we don't want to confuse people with the look of the toy, with the look of the comic book." So instead. He created this, um, doing essentially what he wanted to do with Iceman in the first place. So that was actually really, really cool. A little bit behind the scenes there. All right. And then we have 
Creed issue number one from Lightning Comics. Uh, I believe this is actually the reprint since it's from Lightning Comics. Um, but Creed, wow, Creed was one of those books where back in the day, all of us kids, teenagers, were completely jealous because Trent Kanuga was creating this comic book and he was 16 years old at the time when he came out. I mean, this kid was living the dream as a comic book artist and writer and we were all just unbelievably jealous and just in awe also of his talent uh i don't i still believe he does a few issues every now and again of different books but mostly he's just doing artwork for video game designs i believe he actually works for blizzard doing world of warcraft design or something in that effect gotta have this on the list this is scooby apocalypse we got a jim lee cover here uh, this was a complete revamp of the Scooby-Doo franchise, and I gotta say, it is one of the best reads you are ever going to find in the history of ever. Scooby aside, the entire gang is completely retconned into monsters are real, and they're trying to save the world. I mean, it's actually like a horde, and humanity's completely overrun. The, the, the planet is in apocalypse mode. It's so good. It's an absolutely amazing story. Oh, and then we have Darker Image, number one, and this is my new stand variant. I honestly can't tell you why I love this book so much. You got Sam Keith, Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld. I mean, the only thing, it, it's the epitome of 90s. I mean, that's one of the reasons you got to love it. I cannot pass this book up whenever I see it. New stand, regular, all the different cards, the gold edition, the silver edition, the, uh, the ash can. I just got to have them all when I see them. <laughs> All right, G.I. Joe issue number 252, and this is the Stuart Sager variant. Uh, absolutely beautiful cover. Now, the big reason why this is on my list is because of this right here. See that beautiful, this gorgeous remark by Stuart Sager right there. He's such a great guy. I had a fun, I, I have a blast every time I talk to him. Uh, we actually email back and forth every so often. And he's just a really, really great guy. He does some amazing artwork. Everybody should check his stuff out. Oh, and you got to love these clear backboards. <laughs> uh, all right. Marvel Comics presents number 84, The Weapon X Story. This was pretty much my introduction to Barry Windsor Smith. And this guy... He draws the quintessential Wolverine to me. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I love it to death, especially this cover in particular. And this is a wraparound cover. Aptly named The Agony of the Claws. Again, clear backboard, gotta love that. And it's funny, uh, it was maybe late 90s or so. I was at a San Diego Comic-Con, and Glenn Danzig, yes, that Glenn Danzig of Misfits and Danzig fame, he's a huge comic book fan. He used to run a booth every year selling original comic book artwork as long as, as well as promoting his own books for Verotic Comics. And he had the original artwork of this on his table. And uh, you know, he actually he let me hold it. It was so incredible. It was almost like a spiritual moment holding this piece of artwork in my hands. I think he was asking, like, Twenty or thirty thousand dollars for it. <laughs> By the end of the show, it was gone. Someone bought it. I mean, wow, just beautiful. And next up, GI Joe, Real American, Hero, Real American Hero, issue number twenty-one. This is the silent issue. Again, it's told completely from the vantage point of Snake Eyes, so it's totally silent. And like I said, I have a huge affinity for silent books. I always love it when an artist can tell a story with just pictures. That's how you know you have found a good artist. And coming up to the end here, this is Love Town, issue number two. Now, Love Town is by the Yuan Twins. Uh, they are absolutely amazing guys. I, Matt and John, amazing people. I love talking to them. Uh, you guys might know them from recently. They were on uh, one of an, an episode of Agents of Shield in the last six months. With they are members of the Deke Squad. <laughs> Just look for the twins, and you'll see the guys who created this book. They are writers, they are artists, and they publish their own books through uh, First Comics. 
And uh, I love the entire series, but this cover in particular, I just absolutely adore it. It's just, it's beautiful. I love the use of the colors, the black and white with the red, the blood, the anger. I mean, you got Allie Saxon in all of her different forms. She is a vampire, by the way. I love that cover so much. I contacted them and was able to buy the original cover. So I actually own the original cover art of Love Town issue number two. I mean, it just, it doesn't get any better than that. Beautiful. All right, we only have one book left over, and it's actually kind of a group of books. All right, so what do we got here? We have this awesome group of books that came out of the Wildstorm month back in the 90s. Now, the reason I am lumping all of these together is because they all form one giant picture. So I'm going to try to put these together and then show you guys how cool this is. I mean, this is probably one of the earliest connecting covers. All right, we are all together. Let's see if I can... Look at that. Isn't that amazing? All eight issues. I do eventually want to get these all framed together to form one big picture. Absolutely beautiful. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Wills Porstasio was the one who did the artwork for all of these together. Man, it's just gorgeous. Team 7, Wildcats, Stormwatch, Gen 13, Kindred, Deathblow, Union, and Wetworks. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous books. So I'm just going to leave those right there while I say... Goodbye, because this is it. That was number 50. All of these together count as number 50. Sue me. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, this was my top 50 comics in my collection, year three. So I hope you enjoyed it um, as much as I enjoyed putting it together. So like always, uh, you know, thank you for watching. To my channel members. You should see your name actually scrolling up right now saying huge thank you. If you're not subscribed or to my subscribers, thank you very much for watching. If you're not subscribed, hit the little CB right there and hit the little bell up top to get all my cool notifications. And like always guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you uh, check out my Facebook page as well and my Instagram and all that kind of good stuff. Especially my private Facebook page. These guys are getting some insider information that no one else is getting currently. All right. Thank you for watching. Take it easy.